She is from America. She has a beautiful, beautiful garden. I love seeing her on Facebook and seeing her garden uh, and her beautiful little cats in her house. Um, she's been working on guerrilla skepticism on Wikipedia, so editing lots of Wikipedia pages, creating Wikipedia pages, um, and she's been working on some other operations as well, including Operation Peach Pit, which my husband Dan Ryan helped her on, uh, which you can read about in a New York Times article. And I'm sure Susan will tell us more about that as well. inviting me. Um, I usually am allowed to come here every three years, but you had this thing happen that is, what was that, a pandemic or something like that? And that made four years since the last time I was here. So <laughs> I am not going to do Q&A, but I am here all weekend and I am happy to answer your questions. You can have one-on-one -on -one time with me the whole time and you can also contact me on Facebook or wherever you want. So I'm going to need the full time probably to be able to give you all the information. I came here from California to give you. I'm reporting back to my peers. That's the way I look at it. You are my peers and I'm reporting back to you on some of the projects we did in the last four years. So I am not going to have a lot of fancy slides. Melanie's going to do that for you guys. She's the queen of awesome slides. But I'm using them more as a reminder to myself what I'm going to be talking about. Anything I put up here that has a lot of words on it, try not to read it. It's, it's just for a guide. And I'm happy to have you use your cell phones to be able to take pictures of slides as they come up and then later go back and say, oh, I was going to look that up. That seemed really interesting because I'm going to put articles and things up here that will probably be something you want to read about. And I'm not going to go into depth because I just don't have the time. We've been busy the last four years. So what we're going to start off with is my main mission. The, the purpose I'm, that I really want to be here for to make sure everybody understands we must work together. There is no way we're going to legislate ourselves out of the mess that we're in right now. We cannot wait for governmental organizations to kind of, you know, get their act together. We as a collective have to make the difference. And that requires a lot of people who are just like yourselves. And I was just a person who used to come to conferences and sit and listen to lectures. I was an armchair skeptic for many years. And so there's a lot of different programs that are out that we get a lot of projects that you can get involved in. And I'll talk about that a little bit in a minute. To start off with, I'm going to be talking about two main projects. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I have many projects that I'm interested in and that I'm involved in, but the one that I'm known for, well, I guess I have two main known for. And the first one is the Girl Skeptics on Wikipedia project. And I have one of my representatives here today, and that's Greg, Greg, Greg Grant. So Greg over here, he's it, uh, one of my editors, very, very well trained and uh, legal. So, oh, that's recorded, right? Okay, never mind. Um, so if you have questions that I can't answer or technical questions or anything that I talk about that maybe will, um, Greg will be able to answer, he's happy to go ahead and, and help you with that throughout the weekend. And I do have stickers. I have, uh, uh, I'll call you cool stuff if you guys want business cards or stickers or uh, stuff like that. Please see me. I have several. So we're going to start. We're going to talk about Wikipedia, but first we're going to start about the Girl of Skeptics. Now the Girl of Skeptics is a more or less a loose net organization, sort of under the nonprofit of About Time Pro um, Project. I hope you guys are going to take a picture of that slide because a lot of the articles are going to be right on that slide that I gave to AboutTimeProject.org. I'll, I'll give you that slide, a chance to do that again in a minute. The Girl of Skeptics, um, we, my boyfriend Mark Edward, who was here in Christchurch a few years ago, he uh, coined the term Girl of Skeptics, and we, and also the phrase Grief Vampire. And so we focus on mainly those celebrity, the people who have more of a name, or more of a presence um, of celebrity psychics. And we're really talking about mediumship, those who claim to be able to communicate dead. That is my, my expertise, that area. But I'm going to put this all together into one little pile of an example of something that happened during the pandemic. So you have this psychic, uh, so one of the things we did, the first thing I did is I wanted to see if any psychic had predicted COVID. Any odds? Anybody have a guess how many people predicted COVID? <laughs> or this world shut down, millions of people dead? None. Okay, so zero did. So I went through all the websites on my team, Operation Grief Vampire. I have a couple people here, as uh, Lisa was saying, her husband is was one of the people on the team. That uh, we went through all the websites of all the psychics that we could find. Don't be reading this. I know you're reading. Stop reading. <laughs> 
So this is an article you can find, take a picture if you want, so you can go back and you can read this article that I pub, uh, publish, I publish under Skeptical Inquirer Online. Dot org. So what we did is we went through and we made screenshots of all of their websites saying that they had an event. Why would you have an event during the pandemic? Do you know that it would be canceled? Um, no, none of them did. Some went on vacation. They took vacations. One psychic was in like Ireland and she couldn't get back for a while. I'm like, well, why didn't you know? They didn't. Have, I wasn't expecting them to know that there would be something called COVID-19. But what I expected them to do is think that there's going to be this giant disruption and travel's going to be a problem. New Zealand, Australia is going to be locked down. You would think. No, none of them did. I thought this would be the end of this nonsense, but apparently it wasn't. So Stu Nicholson was one of the people who came here to this conference many years ago. I wasn't, unfortunately I wasn't here, but she gave a talk to New Zealand skeptics. I love that you guys include some of that kind of intro, uh, um, world. I think it's important that we know that. So um, I did that. That's an article that has all the screenshots of everything that all the psychics, everybody we know of, no one predicted, no one made any kind of nothing. And I love that they would say, oh, we're postponing it. We'll let you know when you can come back safely. I'm like, well, shouldn't you know? I mean, can't you give us some kind of timeline? Is it gonna be April? Some would schedule an event, cancel it, schedule it again, cancel that. And then it's just like, how can you not, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way, that's what they tell me. So this Jeanette Wilson, maybe anybody, hands up, anybody knows who Jeanette Wilson is? You've seen her in the news? Okay, so she is a psychic here in New Zealand. Um, it's like, and she, don't be reading this. And so, <laughs> Jeanette Wilson, you can Google her and find out, uh, you'll learn more about her in a minute. I'm not gonna go into great depth, but she caught her eye because the New Zealand skeptics, I'm, I pay attention to what a lot of people do, and I have, a t I have a team of people that we try to watch what's going on. And we really do try our best to keep informed of what's on your guys' mind, what you're publishing, what you're writing about, what you're interested in. Who's, who's the next big star in the pseudoscience world? And uh, she was very interesting, and we were like, okay, whatever, she's somebody. Oh, she doesn't heal people. She channels dead doctors who will heal people. Totally different thing, right? Okay. So um, I also contribute uh, often to the Skeptic Zone. I hope you all subscribe to the Skeptic Zone, an amazing podcast. And so he was talking about Jeanette Wilson, and I thought, okay, all right, Jeanette Wilson, okay. You know, the names, we hear all these things all the time. Who should we concentrate our very limited time on? We only have so many, so much time. So I did attend your Christchurch, and I've been at Queenstown conferences. It was amazing, that was so much fun. I wrote an article on it. If you guys want to see if your name's in there, you can look and see. I have to take a lot of photographs. And that was, I, I published it. And this is the beginning of the pandemic. We didn't know there was gonna be a pandemic because nobody warned us. But everything is gonna be all right. I was, that was a sign that was up in Christchurch and I thought, Donald Trump, everything's gonna end up, we're gonna get through this. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be okay. And then it was, the world just was like, hold my beer. You guys know that expression? <laughs> you think it's bad? Let me show you how bad it can be. So I met up with Russell at the conference in Christchurch, and sadly Russell was no longer with us. And this is his lovely mother, um, Marilyn, and he was just—he was a, a great um, skeptic part of your community. I believe he was a board member, and um, he died suddenly a couple years, a couple of years ago. So um, what Russell did is he—he he hated Facebook, but he joined Facebook so he could participate in one of my secret groups. Um, the Operation Grief Empire, and he kept talking about Jeanette Wilson, talking about Jeanette Wilson. So during the pandemic, I said, all right, let's just, let's just do something with this, okay? What can we do? So I talked to him and he said that she's got a lot of anti-vaccine views, a lot of anti-vaccine views, but we can't catch her on it because he's gone to, and I think some other people had gone to her in-person shows, but when the videos came out on YouTube that she recorded, the parts about the vaccine and that kind of wooey kind of stuff were missing. And so what we did is I and Russell and his mother, um, very late night for me, early morning for me, we went and attended one of her events. Zoom is amazing because we can get into all these things. And all, all the psychics, when the pandemic hit, all the psychics went to Zoom. So us activists, we went to Zoom and we were able to, and it's very easy to record. So we went to her show two hours of meditation, oh my God. 
two in the morning, I thought it was going to die. The clouds are floating in the background, just peacefully floating. And so we get to the very end, I'm on an hour, you know, an hour and a half, and I said, I haven't really got anything good, it's just meditation. And so I asked her a question, and I asked her about the pandemic. I said, here in America, we're terrified. We have 100,000 people dead, which was early on in the pandemic. And we want to know what's going to happen with vaccines, and we want to know what's going to happen with, with COVID and so on. She went on for 16 minutes. It got crazier and crazier and crazier as we were going. And um, I'm like just beaming from ear to ear, knowing I'm recording. So um, what ended up happening is I, because of the wonderful relationship the New Zealand skeptics have with the media here, and Melanie and I were able to do two TV shows this week. We did uh, TV NZ, um, and you did TV3. So we did competing networks to promote this. Anybody here come here because you saw us on TV and said, oh, that sounds good. Damn. All right. So next year, you guys. So, but because of the relationship the New Zealand skeptics have had with the media, it was able to, to get this information in front of the media. In America, we have a lot of problems with this. So we sent um, the video that I did off to the spin-off. And um, another really kind group is the, um, the media is uh, Radio New Zealand. And I know that um, Greg found me, um, my girl skepticism on Wikipedia Project because he was listening at the gym to uh, uh, the interview I did on Radio um, New Zealand. And he said, ah, oh, this sounds like something I have got to join. So anyway, so we gave this to them. Um, you can look this up, it's on, you can take a picture if you want to remember. Or you can go to the Wikipedia page that I'll be talking about in a minute. And what happened is that Toby McManhire, he interviewed her about her, and he asked her about her anti-vaccine views and so on. And she said, what are you talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have any of those. And he said, lady, I just watched your video. And she's like, what video? <laughs> <laughs> hey, lady, you're the psychic, right? OK, so she didn't know that I was sitting there. We never, when we do stings, we never, we never confront we, we always stay in, we always stay incognito. So anyway, so he was able to write this article about her. And when we have enough articles that are independent and they're from secondary sources and so on, we're able to write Wikipedia pages. Wikipedia pages, so you reading this? This is her Wikipedia page, and this is a, um, you can tell this is coming from my team because my team's well trained. And the lead, that's the very first paragraph up there. Ooh, I have a little red thing I push. Let's, go, let's see, let's try it out. No, that didn't do it. Let's see. The what? Bring it over. Oh, the red thing. So this is called a lead on every Wikipedia page. These are very carefully written. I'll show you why in a second. Also, this alternative medicine little sub bar over here is something that a lot of our GSOW projects will do is put these on the pages so that a person can immediately go to Wikipedia and they can know in seconds what they're dealing with. And so these are correct, carefully written the way they are. So um, when you're doing a Google search on somebody, what will happen is a lot of the content is pulled that are, you see over here is pulled, that's directly from Wikipedia. So that's why we want the lead really carefully written because we want the information to go to a Google search so somebody doesn't have to go to Wikipedia. They can get their information from here. Now I want to make sure I mention we follow all the rules of Wikipedia. We are uh, very careful about what we do, and everything that we, we write and put on Wikipedia is vetted by the world of other Wikipedia editors, so we can't get away with anything funny. But we're just very careful the way we do, do it on purpose, because we know that people are reading it. You'll see that the Wikipedia came up first on her, a search for her, her name. So before her own website and before other information, Wikipedia is gonna be the big dog. That's where, where people are gonna find their information, so that's why it's important. Uh, Kitty Biddle, I love Kitty Biddle. He's uh, the brand new um, uh, in private, uh, private investigator for the Center for Inquiry, which I am an ambassador for. I work very closely with the uh, Center for Inquiry. And he, I gave him, she made a lot of claims to Jeanette Wilson about ghosts and ghost photos. So he went above and beyond, as he always does. And he wrote an article with all sorts of um, diagrams and things about ghost orbs and things like that. And we really went into great depth about ghost photographs. It was a wonderful article. And uh, here's one of her pictures she put up on her 
she had, and I know it looks like a kid's looking at a cake, but no, that's a ghost's arm right there. And so he, <laughs> so um, this is a, a wonderful article if you have any interest whatsoever in ghosts, <coughs> photography, and so on. Okay, so Jeanette Wilson, her career wasn't over. She decided she'd run for one of your governmental offices and her career was 22 hours long. And uh, I don't know if the Wikipedia page had anything to do with that, but we'll take credit for it if we can. I believe she just ran for another office this just last year, somebody told me to, and then I think it was a very brief, you're out of here. Okay, so we're gonna talk about really quick one more thing in the gorilla skeptics world, which is the psychic world and how it connects to the New Zealand skeptics, is that um, I do a lot of these events, uh, attending online Zoom things, and write about it in depth, because I believe it's important to always report back on your results of whatever it is that you've done. Whatever activism you've done, you need to measure it and you need to report back to your peers, even if it fails. So we attended a lot of Zoom events, and I've distorted these people's images. Almost all people who seek out psychics, especially these uh, ones that claim to communicate with dead or women. Now on Zoom, there's a lot of tells in the background of people's uh, images, you can also, all these people, I've distorted it so for the privacy, but all of these people have their names on the screen of Zoom, which makes it very easy to find them on Facebook or other social media, especially women who hyphenate their names and they have unusual names. And so people who hot read, that's a psychic who looks them up, which is not most psychics. Most psychics cold read, and that's where they just get general information from just your body language and thousands of uh, readings they've done, they're, they're good at that. It's a, they come in cold. But a hot reading, they're able to get the information off of their social media. So this is all uh, one of the events I've done. And I write about this extensively, and I also have a, a YouTube channel, and it's called Psychics Explained, and I have my shirt on right now. And you can pick up a sticker for me if you want. Uh, Psychics Explained. And it's a YouTube channel that I started recently to really get into the weeds of mediumship because people fall for this, but why? You know, and I'm interested in the psychology of it. So when adults get involved in mediums, eh, it's adults, okay? Yeah, it's, it's they're pre being preyed on, they're being manipulated, their emotions are being manipulated, that's one thing. But when children are involved, now this is a psychic that I, I have had the most uh, dealings with, his name is Thomas John, you don't need to know who he is really, he's just some guy who hot reads and we catch them often. And he was the subject of the New York Times article that um, we mentioned earlier. So he was having a mediumship reading for children between the ages of five and 12. So I could not get this thing canceled. I asked one of my peers, uh, Stephen Novella, who writes for Science-Based Medicine and SGU, he wrote an article. He's a neurologist at Yale. I thought maybe he would have some weight so he went and researched what was going on with Tom, uh, Thomas John in this mediumship event, and we couldn't get it canceled. So he wrote this article basically saying young minds probably shouldn't have mediumship, you know, because that's, that's child abuse. So we could not get it canceled. So what we did is we had to attend, and there was only eight people <laughs> in the US. There was only eight people allowed, $400 a person. I needed a child that was under 12, and I didn't have any children under 12. So I asked around on Facebook and I said, I need, a, I need somebody who looks 12, but is actually over 18 for a project. <laughs> and I had to be vague. And thankfully I have a good reputation. And um, uh, one of your New Zealand skeptics, uh, Cherie and her daughter said, we, we can do it. My daughter's 14, but she looks, she, she can play 12 and she's an actress, so she does some acting. So we'll do it. And that was a huge commitment for, for her to be able to do. So we set this up, it was, it was excruciating, and we attended. And here they are, attending in their home. And there's a lot to the story, and I absolutely do not have the time to tell you. I've written it up extensively, and I've done talks on it, but it was incredible. We caught him so badly, it was wonderful. <laughs> but, um, so you can see these are some of the other women and the children that attended. I've just graded them out, as I said. These kids are just traumatized. Uh, you can see some of the pictures. I've distorted it so it's not obvious who this child is. 
you can see how this, how 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 awful this is what happens to these children and the parents too. It's it's um, very manipulative what happens to these poor, poor people. As I say, almost all women. It's a it's a crime on women, and um, we haven't taken it seriously in society because especially the police and uh, legislatures and you know people like that. They're like, oh well, it's. That, you know, well, everybody knows psychics are not real, and and how dare you know they should be able. They're getting they're getting grief and they're getting help and all that. It's like nonsense. Um, I think personally, and it's just my opinion, that because it's a crime on women, that it's not taken seriously. That's what I think. And they and for whatever reason, they they it's low volume as far as the money that's taken from these women seventy five dollars, fifty dollars. But um, mo those crimes are overlooked because it's a small change. Nobody wants to go after these people. So we're doing what we can. Um, I wrote this article up, and as I said, I want to report back to my peers. So for you all, you can take a picture of this if you'd like. It's a very long article I wrote in detail. I give a lot of detail in the article because I want the children, when they grow up, to understand what happened. If they happen to Google it, they'll be able, they're not mentioned by name, but I give enough that they'll be able to figure out it was them. Um, and so we call it Operation Onion Ring. And all my stings have these unusual names. My boyfriend, Mark Edward, names the stings. And he's able to, um, it, it's something that hopefully you'll be able to go, what was that again? Operation Onion Ring. Okay, so you'll be able to Google it and you'll find it. All right, for time reasons, we're gonna move on. This is your cue to take a picture if you want to go to these uh, articles again. Because um, they're all on the website, abouttimeproject.org. I will show that slide again. Okay, so let's go to Wikipedia. Again, we, we run Wikipedia uh, uh, group. We are located on Facebook. We have a secret cabal. It's called the secret cabal. And we do all, I do all the training. We have training that's set up. It takes four months or more to learn how to be a Wikipedia editor in our camp. We're pretty much the only Wikipedia team that does this. We are, um, we're concerned only with science, scientific skepticism, claims the paranormal, people of science, and in all languages possible. Now here's some wisdom for anybody who wants to do any kind of activism, writing an article, um, writing, uh, protesting something, writing to the letter to the editor, any kind of activism, try to start with, start with Wikipedia first. Because what's gonna happen is, if you do some kind of activism, people are gonna be curious about what that is and they're gonna to go to Google and they're gonna end up on Wikipedia. And so it's important to get the Wikipedia articles in great shape before you start anything so that you're educating more people. Always measure your results. Somehow come up with some kind of measurement. How am I gonna know if I succeeded? How am I gonna know? And sometimes it's difficult, but you should always measure your results, set up whatever you're doing to measure, and always report back. Okay, so even if you're even if it's you fail, you should still report back in some way, form to a committee, to a group, to, to present it something. So let's talk about this real quick, and I'm going to go through this quite quickly. Um, anybody know who this is? Kennedy. Robert Kennedy Jr. is running for president right now. <laughs> he has in America. Uh, so he has this group called Children's Health Defense. Now that seems innocuous, you know, children. We like children. Most of us do at least. We like help, we want to defend them. Sounds good. So this is his organization. Uh, one of my team members wrote the Wikipedia page in English and in French for children's health defense. Do not read this um, right now. You can look at it later. Again, you can see the telltale signs that we've been there because you can see the over here, the alternative medicine sidebar and the lead is very carefully written. Now, one of the things you didn't notice whenever I showed you this is that on his website, this is his website, he has this little bit, censorship is hiding us from you. That's on his, like when you go to the website, that's the first thing that pops up, and that little tagline on there is saying that we're, somebody's censoring him. And um, so on his, if you go to his website, you'll see that the people who are censoring him are people like us on Wikipedia. Apparently, they have tried repeatedly to get Wikipedia to correct their entry because okay, it's an anti-vaccine, anti-fluoridation, you know, on and on and on, wooey website because the organization is fraught with uh, pseudoscience. So if you didn't already know that. 
Um, we've been, um, they don't know that we're behind writing the Wikipedia pages. I would assume I would receive a lot of flack and hate, but there's nothing they can do about it because it's all done within the rules. Wikipedia is a skeptic source. It is made for us. And <clears throat> most people who edit Wikipedia are skeptics. They may not know them that they're skeptics. They may not self-identify, but they are. So let's see measuring results. So here's the Children's Health Defense uh, Wikipedia page. We keep track of all the edits, I mean, all the views people go to Wikipedia. And anytime somebody hits on one of our pages, we can see how many people have hit on it. Now there are, um, there are conditions. I can't know if it's the same person hitting over and over. I can't know if it's, um, they go in and read the whole page or if they're there just for a second. But we do know that they are hitting these Wikipedia pages. That's how we can measure. And we've, since we created this page in English, it's had over half a million page views. And you can see the spikes there that show how many people are actually hitting it. I'm gonna briefly go on to somebody else. This is Barbara O'Neill. Anybody know who Barbara O'Neill is? Or heard of her? She's very famous in Australia. She was nobody. And um, again, exactly the same way that, we, that Jeanette Wilson came to our attention, the uh, Barbara O'Neill came to our attention and she was Kind of a nobody, just somebody in Australia, somebody who was uh, way out there practicing quackery, in my opinion, quackery uh, things. And so um, she kept getting repeated on Skeptic Zone and in the UK because she wanted to do a tour of the UK and, and do her talks there. So we wrote a Wikipedia page, not thinking much about it, and um, we, and here's another mention, she, she shares a name with this very famous actress apparently who's in Gone with the Wind, poor thing. So, <laughs> so whenever she's Googled, uh, the Gone with the Wind stuff come up. But so you can see here, uh, even recently, this is what came up first in the, the search I did. And you can see over here that she's an Australian alternative medicine personality known for um, promoting dangerous and unsupported alternative medicine cited by the <laughs> So it's there on purpose. Now, we created the page, we didn't think anything of it, all right? So here's our stats, 124 million, I mean 124,000 stats. So it was nothing. But what ended up happening is she found TikTok. And so she started a channel on TikTok and um, she's got a half a million followers, uh, one almost two million likes. And I hope this plays, let's say, will this play? This is a, a quick one minute. Bible salt is a dangerous salt. The seawater contains 92 minerals. Approximately 30% is sodium, 50% is chloride. Because we now have two very harsh minerals that if you were to inject both of those into the blood, you would die. So when people come to me with high blood pressure, I put them on Celtic salt because Celtic salt contains 82 minerals. Hold on, but she just attacked sodium chloride for containing sodium and chloride. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you guys know, this is Barbara O'Neill, a naturopath who actually got banned from teaching after the New South Wales Healthcare Complaints Commission investigation found that she lacked any health-related qualifications, degree, diploma, or membership from an accredited health organisation, and for providing dangerous, unsupported health advice to vulnerable groups. This included advising parents to feed their infants raw goat milk or almond milk blended with dates or banana instead of formula, and recommending cancer patients forego chemotherapy in favor of baking, soda wraps, and dietary changes. And in this video, she stated that if you inject sodium or chloride into the blood, you would die. This is how I know she has no clinical experience at all. Do you want to know what I prescribe every single hospital shift I work? These bags are fluid with literally sodium chloride <laughs> inside it. But of course, as with anything, there will always be a toxicity point. That doesn't make it bad, so I have no idea what she's on about. And lastly, trace minerals in the salt do not make it better for hypertension. Control trials show unrefined salts do not make any difference to your blood pressure. Salt is salt. Glass dismissed. <laughs> so this is the kind of nonsense. She's got tons of these videos. I'm watching Melanie over here. She's like, ew. I can see her face going, oh, God. <laughs> So there's a lot of misinformation, which is why we need more people to be doing science communication and science activism. This is out there. So this man, who I didn't know who he was before, he is this person, Dr. Azid, I guess is his name. He thankfully has more followers than she does. She, he has I have almost 2 million followers, uh, 19 million likes, but she only has 2 million likes. 
still it is a battle and uh, what happens is this uh, nonsense goes on TikTok is, is notorious for being younger people who are in their 20s and 30s and they have not lived the life experiences we all know and understand about sodium chloride and all that other stuff so they're being re-educated and uh, by these TikTokers who are coming out with this feel good kind of nonsense and what we have to do is we have to fight it and I don't know if you noticed or not but one of the ways that we are fighting is this man directly used our Wikipedia page we wrote. He went and quoted it. He was pointing to it, you can see here. And this is important because a lot of people don't get their information directly from the Wikipedia page, but you're getting it from osmosis, from the media doing it, and people like this blogger. Because that's what's happening is the, the media does not have the time to go and write these uh, articles in depth. They're relying on shortcuts like Wikipedia. So Wikipedia must be in great shape. Otherwise, we're screwed. You know, it's just the way it is. And so she was nobody. We never, we, we wrote the page just kind of like, just whatever. And it turns out, here's what our Wikipedia stats have done now. Once she got onto TikTok, this is where she's at. One and a half million page views. People are getting all their information about Barbara O'Neill from a lot from this Wikipedia page or from TikTokers or other science communicators or other people who learn about her and don't go to Wikipedia, but they're getting it from, from the media. But if this page had not been written, there would be no really information about her other than some, you know, a TikToker you happen to, to know about. But when she proposes, she presents herself, um, you know, they're obviously looking at it. And it's important because we just decided to write the Wikipedia page on a fluke because somebody had been paying attention to um, uh, the skeptic zone and other things. And this is from my cabal. You guys are looking at a post from my cabal. I've cut it so you can't tell who it is, but I wanted to point it out that the editor who created the page back in 2019, she's saying, and you're reading this, aren't you? I know you are. <laughs> she's saying she wants to thank um, one of the other editors. She wants to thank Mandy Lee Noble, who is uh, an Australian, uh, who's also on, uh, on my team. And she is a, like a metal, uh, she's a nutritionist. And she talks a lot about um, quackery. And maybe her personal voice might not have been enough, but because she was able to influence one of my team members, to take a look at this person, we were able to get this out there. So it's because of us as a group that we're able to do this kind of work. It's not me, it is, it is a collective. So some of the other pages, I'm just gonna put these up really quick and I'm not gonna talk about them, that we've been able to rewrite or write Puzzling World. We rewrote that because of the conference that we attended. Here's Susie Wills. We, we didn't even know she was gonna be a big deal because of this, then the pandemic hit. And so her Wikipedia page stats went nuts. Um, here's another, Lance O'Sullivan, who's a doctor here in New Zealand. These are all New Zealand so focused pages that we've written. Claire Deek, she's another one of your uh, 12 and 19 people. We wrote her Wikipedia page. Robert Bartholomew, who's up in uh, Auckland. He's um, a fellow, just like Melanie is, and myself as a fellow of the Center for Inquiry. He writes on Havana Syndrome and Mass Psychogenic Illnesses. Anybody who was at the trivia last night and was all about that, I find that fascinating. New Zealand Skeptics, Wikipedia page. Um, Tanya Lyman, she was at uh, the Queenstown um, conference that we attended in New Zealand uh, 2016, 2017. She was one of the speakers and we wrote her Wikipedia page and she barely passed notability and recently she died. So um, I'm really happy to have, that we were able to get this Wikipedia page out uh, not, obviously we didn't know she was gonna die, but she was a, a, a teacher of the year, and it's important that we recognize our teacher, teachers, you know. And so a lot of these people are marginal as far as getting onto Wikipedia. Uh, notability standards are very high. I took those pictures too. And that's, we find a lot of people don't realize you can help us out a lot by taking pictures because most scientists and people don't have good photographs that we, and they need to be uploaded. It's a real pain. Talk to me if you like taking pictures. Um, the Disinformation Project is another one of your guys' um, groups over here. And uh, this one was fun. Um, Greg could talk about this. This is Ginny in the Eddies. He's one of your, I think he was he was a, just a teach uh, a, a doctor here. Ooh, who's calling in? Is it Johnny in the Eddies? Is it, Liz, is it Jeanette Wilson? <laughs> Barbara O'Neill? Who's calling? <laughs> Psychics. Another emergency. So Jimmy in the Eddies was this man who was a doctor, I believe, 
um, he decided to come up with a cartoon that he wanted to put in his waiting room for to help the kids understand vaccinations and things. I think it's really quaint. So he came up with this. We wrote the Wikipedia page. It hasn't had very many views, but it's okay. We've got the Wikipedia page. He just barely passed notability. It's really kind of fun. But uh, Christchurch Botanical Gardens, that falls under our purview because it's a um, science um, thing. So I want to remind you all that before you do anything, really focus on getting those Wikipedia pages in order or talk to us. Uh, this is a man that I'm going to mention briefly. Nobody's ever heard of. We've never heard of him. He was into UFOs. He was in Denver in the United States, and he was trying to get people to the Denver to build a landing strip for the UFOs that were coming. And he was. We wrote the Wikipedia page, and nobody thought anything of it. And it for, went around with like 10 views a day forever. And then Netflix decided to do a show on him. And all of a sudden, just like, what the heck? What is going on? Look at these stats. Look at that spike. That's what happened when Netflix took it on. So now it, he had 1.4 million views. And that was just like a fluke because we didn't know that there was going to be anything happening. We're not psychic. So for the longest time, this little part right here, I don't know if you can see it. It's just a dead line. It's, it's barely any views at all. And then you don't know what's going to hit next. You never know what science thing is. You never know what's going to fall under our purview. I think you guys don't know who this is. <laughs> so we didn't know. And I don't know if the Protect Protect Techie is I saying right. We didn't know if the page was going to get a lot of views or not. We didn't know uh, anything about this. But this would have fallen under our purview because it's science related. So we want to get all those birds pages all nicely written with photographs and everything in advance because we don't know when John Oliver is going to do something like this again. <laughs> or who knows who's going to do anything about this. So um, this is, in, just in case you're curious, this is what the Wikipedia stats did whenever John Oliver did his little thing. And there's 42, almost 43,000 views during the time that I, you know, from what I created here, 20, August 2023, up until when I created this slide just a, a week or so ago. So 40,000 people viewed this Wikipedia page who would probably have never visited the Wikipedia page. It's got to be in great shape. So I'm nearly done. Um, what I want to do is I want to talk just again. I have to mention that we are um, have to measure our results somehow. So I'm going to tell you that we um, here's some numbers. They mean nothing um, until I tell you the relationship. But this is how many pages we have created: 2,183. 45 percent of the work we do, we do is in languages outside of English, and um, these are pages that we follow. We make tons of edits, you guys. But these are the pages: 2,183 so far is what we've created or rewritten, taken from a stub to something beautiful or something that was created in whole cloth. We don't have hardly any pushback. What my team does is by the rules, they do it correctly. And so when we put a page up and make it live, rarely does it get touched. It might get some tweaking and that's fine. We might get a lot of hate from some people who are upset about it, but almost never do we have a problem. And if we do, it's quickly reverted. So if we're looking at page views, we're at 153,169, 480 as of this morning. That's how many page views have people have looked at those 2,183 pages. Uh, we must work together. It's really important. I put this. We have to have we have to have more individuals doing more work in our community. Just. It, it, attending the conference is actually important. I mean, James was, James I was sitting with last night, I just met him, he brought two friends to the conference that would normally have not have probably come here. And I think that's a form of activism too, just attending and getting your friends and your family to come and show up at these events. Um, things like the writing books, I know we can't all be experts, but I just got a copy of this to sign. So this is um, one of your next speakers. And she's written a book on the Christchurch um, Civic, I don't know how you say that word, Cresh case? Yeah. So these are kinds of things that we can use for Wikipedia. This is all important stuff to be able to use. Um, not everybody can be an expert, but, but they're always looking for people who can write and um, do videos and things like that. I know New Zealand Skeptics is looking for somebody to help with the newsletter. I'm just saying, is that right? Did I hear that? Somebody told me, I think you have $100,000. Um, challenge out there. I write for Skeptical Inquirer magazine, and I hope that you guys subscribe to magazines such as this and others, the UK um, uh, Skeptic and um, the Australian Skeptic magazine and so on. These we can cite. We can take these articles that are written in here 
and we can use these as Wikipedia sites. So having these really interesting articles, and they're always looking for writers, uh, online or in print, these are ways of giving back. So this is a way of working together. So I'm gonna show my last little slide, and this is your cue to take another picture if you haven't already, so that you will know to go and look this up. So I finished early, I'm done. Thank you guys for having me here. So uh, we like to have the Wikipedia pages have all the good information. The, the, for example, uh, Haunted House, we wrote the Wikipedia page for Haunted House recently, and also for the Winchester Mystery House and Spirit Photography and so on. One of my editors just loves that kind of stuff. And so we put the, the, the urban legend or the, the, the non-CC stuff on the Wikipedia page, we leave it there, and then we have ex people who are experts, they write an article and it's in journalism. I mean, we can't just put a blog or a website in there. So they write something, and then, then we can quote them. So we'll have the misinformation, and then we'll have the information. So we are platforming these people, but they're already at a certain threshold anyway. So the psychics and so on, they're just very close to being right there. We're just gonna make sure we write the page first before anybody else does, and get in and get the information. Not saying that we can't change it or they can't change it, but yeah, it's, it's what are you gonna do? You gotta get the information out there somewhere. Somebody needs to get it. There's a next question in the back. Somebody wanna, can I come over here? Could they sing a song or are they coming up? I'm looking for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Sarah asked about the Wikipedia page. Um, is it still being used by For example, can you um, but in Australia there is a um, a political um, movement by the Australian Christian Lobby. They're basically the far right Christian Lobby in the US, and there's a lot of um, anti-abortion, anti-climate change, um, anti-education that they fight against. Well, I don't know if I can answer it fully, but I. We really don't get into politics. We try to stay with anything science. I understand that you mean that they're, that we'll try to go, like the skeptic community itself does, is we don't pick on, we don't talk about religion itself, but we talk about the claims of religion, anything that they claim. One of the things we do, and you know, going to this question of here might help a little bit, is we try to make the Wikipedia pages stronger for the people who are our, our activists, the people who are speaking out, the, the people who are the climate change, um, people who should be recognized by um, the media. We push those Wikipedia pages, we write them, we get them in great shape so that the media knows who to go to are the experts. And so, mm -hmm. I don't think, I, so to answer your question, I'm, I, don't, I can't think of an example of anything getting involved in that. We really try not to get into anything that's contentious. We write the Wikipedia pages, we put them up, and then they're usually protected, more or less, and I use that in quotes, protected, by other Wikipedia editors who are not on our team. We write the page and we move on to something else. So other Wikipedia people who, who are better suited at that are keeping the nonsense off, you know, keeping it from being um, reverted, keeping junk off of there. So um, yeah, I can't, think of a, I can't think of anything like that, but I think it's, it's possible to get involved in it, but it just seems like it's too time consuming and it's too much of a, edit war happening probably on those pages. Like we would never get involved in the Gaza, Israel thing. Well, it's not technically science related, but um, 
it, it would just take up all our time and, and it's better just to work on some of these other things that are probably something we could have an effect on. I mean, we'd only be so, so far. Any other questions? Yes? Um, I don't know a lot, a lot about Wikipedia, but... Uh, how it knows you, a lot about you. No. <laughs> how do you stop, okay, uh, these guys are talking rubbish and then those people change what you've written and then you change back? And then you ah, you told me you were going to ask me this question, weren't you? <laughs> no, but they don't really do it because these guys don't follow the rule. They don't understand. They don't get rules. And Wikipedia is all rules. It's, it's, it's kind of hard to... To navigate that's why it's good to have an editing team some a team like ours that will go through and, and and help you you know we go through and our secret group follow answers questions and so on so we had like uh Jeanette Wilson when she found out she had a Wikipedia page she had kittens and um, she literally no I'm only <laughs> and <laughs> she went to the Wikipedia page tried to she went to the talk page she tried to get the page deleted she was ranting and, and on and on she was really upset and the other editors, not our team, were answering her saying, well, you'll have to take it up with an administration, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, well, I have that. Is this all nonsense? You can't get anything on there unless you know what you're doing. It's just, they can, they can remove it, but it's going to go right back up in seconds later. You just can't. Once it's well written, it's, it's just kind of done. So, yeah, they can't really do much about it. And a lot of the psychics are cancer quacks or... Um, you know, these people, you know, different people we've had to deal with, they will tell their, here's a sign, you know, you're following somebody. If they say, whatever you do, don't read my Wikipedia page, it's just all lies about me. <laughs> so we hear that from people, we've seen that, like that, um, the, um, what's his name? Robert Kennedy Jr., same thing. He's telling people, you know, it's censoring it against us. Do I have time for one more? Is there any quick one? Because I've got like three minutes, but I'm going to use it. Um, yeah, somebody. Yeah, just sort of following up with that last question, um, regarding for the editing wars, some of these organizations are pretty well resourced. I'm thinking particularly some of uh, the right wing kind of astrophysical groups in the States. Um, Heartland Institute is just one that comes mm -hmm. to mind. Um, is that something that you uh, did? I read the Wikipedia page for some of the people who were. Um, the experts on the Hartman Institute and some of those people who would be the critics of it, you know, science people. So we've done that. No, they're, they're well, Robert Kennedy, gosh, she's got to have the great funding because there's nothing they can really do. First off, they don't take Wikipedia seriously, I think. They don't really understand it. They can't really change it. We're not, we're, Wikipedia's not even funded by, like, anything, I mean, other than private donations. So I, I don't know what they would do. I don't know how they could do it. I mean, even Scientologists got couldn't change the Scientology pages. We've edited a lot of Scientology pages, by the way. But you can't do it because it's just too hard. I mean, I guess you could make a, they've tried to make a counter group, but they, they said they were gonna make a counter group to, to my project, the GSOW. And um, they were talking about how they were gonna start training people and none of that. And so I joined, I used a fake name. <laughs> and I went, to their, I went to their accounts and I said, okay, so let's do this. Let's, let's counter these girl skeptics and let's just do this. And they're like, well, yeah, well, we got it. So anybody know how to edit Wikipedia? And I'm like, yeah, I can do it, I can do it anyhow. They just, they don't have the connection. They don't know how. Running these organizations, let me tell you, is a lot of work. I had to create all the training. I do all the training. I have all these amazing people that I'm so proud of that I can't believe follow me and show up and, and do this work. I just can't believe it. But no, they did. So what ended up happening? I kept posting on that page saying, when are we going to start? What are we going to do? How are we going to do this? And they just, just quietly went away. They realized how much work it is. It's not easy. And you're constantly banned. So I guess that's, that's it. If you want to talk to me later, I'm here and you can contact me and blah, blah, blah. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you in three years.